before I start today, I want to uh, thank everyone who's come to our Lunch and Learns during the, this uh, COVID year. And we're all anxious to get back to our in-person thing, which will hopefully happen in the fall. Um, I would love for you to send uh, an email to Nancy or anyone in the office if you've got an idea for a Lunch and Learn speaker. I want you to be aware of the fact that uh, we already have selected our speakers for the fall term and in two weeks we'll be meeting to try and get some speakers to agree to come and speak to us for the winter term. So if you give me a recommendation and you don't see it right away, uh, we're not ignoring you, but that's how far on we are when we do ask our speakers to come and talk to us. Today our speaker is Aaron, Aaron Ford, who is the current interim CEO of South Carolina Bio. She recently transitioned from executive vice president and COO. Uh, she works in the corporate strategies emanating from the organization's three statewide offices, its boards and hundreds of supporting members and investors. Her comprehensive responsibilities include serving as a primary lead for South Carolina bio businesses operations and finances, championing investors relations and existing industry strategies, and spearheading integrated marketing initiatives. She previously served as a sales and marketing executive for PolyMed, a global innovation company that's in developing absorbable polymers and constructs for the medical device industry. While working with that firm, she served on the board of South Carolina Bio Board of Directors and before her role at PolyMed, she was a business recruitment officer at Upstate South Carolina Alliance. She served as the main point of contact for life science companies interested in expanding or locating in South Carolina. While at the Upstate Alliance, she served as an ex officio South Carolina bio member from 2013 to 2015 and she led a regional bioscience task force comprised of industry executives from across the region. She also has extensive television experience as a documentary producer and sportscaster. She got her BA in communications from LaSalle University. She's married, makes her home in Simpsonville with her husband and 12 year old son. And when she's not busy working, they enjoy reading and uh, during COVID, even painting by numbers. So I'm going to turn it over to Erin and let her tell us about South Carolina Bio and how it's affecting South Carolina and the upstate. Thank you for coming, Erin. Uh, well, thank you, Dan, for that wonderful introduction. I appreciate it. And um, yes, I get to do a lot of my reading when the boys are fishing. So, um, so it's always a good time to be outdoors in our wonderful state. So I'm excited to share the story of the life sciences in South Carolina with you all um, here today. So I have some screens to help reinforce that story. So um, I will share them here uh, this morning. And as we said, um, any questions that you have uh, as we go through this, uh, looking forward to answering them at the end of, of this program. So. Um, on the screen right now, you see a beautiful shot of Nephron Pharmaceuticals. Uh, and so some people are surprised to believe that this is right in West Columbia. And um, our board chair is Lou Kennedy. So um, she is amazing uh, and a wonderful leader in this industry. And we'll talk a little bit more about what her company does uh, for us um, here in South Carolina, but about SC Bio. So um, you heard in the introduction, um, we are a statewide organization really focused on economic development. Um, and that has so many facets within it as far as the recruitment, the supporting existing industries uh, and, and beyond. And so what really it comes down to it, what our vision is to be the best at what we're doing uh, and to build, advance, innovate and grow the life science industry in South Carolina. Um, and we are, we are the storytellers of the life sciences here in South Carolina. We'll talk a little bit um, about um, what the life sciences is because it encompasses so many um, categories, if you will, underneath uh, that life sciences um, overarching theme. So SC Bio, South Carolina Bio as an organization has been around for about 11 years. The, the last four years under new leadership, um, our former CEO, Sam Condoris and myself, uh, came, on, 
uh, came on and worked together to really reinvent what SC Bio is today. Um, it was led by one individual, and you might imagine uh, being one person and running a statewide organization is not an easy thing to do. Uh, and the, and the um, organization held one, a yearly annual conference, which was amazing and laid the groundwork for the industry to get together to convene and collaborate. And that is also one of our main priorities is to do is to bring this industry together as it is continuing to grow and emerge um, here in South Carolina, as I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, you know, automotive industry and aerospace industry are, are um, often mentioned and now. Obviously, with even what we've all gone through and continuing to go through with COVID, um, our, our industry has, has really become center stage. <clears throat> Before uh, Sam and I uh, came on board, there was no strategic plan for the life sciences. So even if you see uh, behind me, we have our latest version, 3.0 version, um, of the really the roadmap for the life sciences in South Carolina. You know, if you don't have a plan, how do you know where you're going? And so we really teamed up with the Department of Commerce, and that was something that was different. Um, that we their relationship was there, and we we um, continued to expand on that and work with the Department of Commerce um, and continue to do so um, as we talk about um, our industry. Um, so as many some of you may know that South Carolina ranks high number one in foreign direct investment um, for the last three of the five uh, last years, uh, and even with our history here in South Carolina as a, as a textile state. Um, you know, we had a lot of um, industry, a, a global presence here from way back, um, uh, you know, in, in history, a lot of that left um, and now is coming back. And so we had that basis for what um, is attracting a lot of international companies to come to South Carolina. Um, and you see on the screen so many um, of those flags there. And so we continue to, to market to that to that space um, as far as the international market. And that is one of the priorities, I would say, in particular for the life sciences. Um, as, as we continue on, I'll share more of that story. You may be surprised to learn, we talked about automotive and aerospace. Um, in the technology, in this knowledge economy that we're in, life sciences is the fastest growing um, in the state. Uh, 42 of the 46 counties has a presence in the life science market and an annual economic impact on the state of $12 billion. And these numbers, um, aside from the number one and the fastest growing, we've updated that with uh, our friend Joey Van Nessen at the Darlemore School of Business. Um, the other numbers, uh, the 12 billion and that average wage you see there, um, that's from 2017. So we are working on um, having another economic impact study to, uh, to continue to see how those numbers have changed, especially in the light of COVID and obviously our industry um, providing a lot of those answers and resources as, as we've gone through this um, very trying time. This map we love to show. You can just see the variety and um, all, when we talk about those 42 of 46 counties of the presence of the life science industry uh, here in South Carolina. And you will see, um, as you all are um, taking your class here at Furman, in the upstate, we definitely have a large uh, cluster of companies, um, I would say in the pharmaceutical, medical device, research and development. Um, some great stories throughout the state. You know, you see another sort of hub around um, the Midlands and then in the Charleston region. And what you see there also is because they're around the research universities. So our um, companies like to be where the talent is and where that um, cutting edge technology is happening. Um, I mentioned we say I said life sciences several times here already. So what does that mean? So these are the different industries that we categorize under the life sciences from biotech. So you think your drugs and your pharmaceuticals, med tech. So these are, you know, implantable devices that will go in the body, you know, between that and the equipment used in, in the operating rooms, digital health and AI. This is what this is one of the fastest growing, as you might imagine, um, in the industry, even with all of the telehealth that we all we're able to take advantage of, you know, really, um, you know, 10 times the growth than it was expected to um, because that we all relied uh, a lot on, on that technology. And MUSC in Charleston was one of the leaders um, in, in that technology. BioAg does fall under um, our category as well of life sciences. We support Department of Agriculture on a lot of uh, projects or assistance if needed. 
like science distribution, you see softbox there. One of the success stories in the Pfizer vaccine, um, if you got a Pfizer vaccine, you know, they were distributed in a softbox um, specialty box so that it was refrigerated and kept at the temperatures it needed to do. And they, they've been here um, before this all hit, though their technology and their innovation in creating um, the materials to get pharmaceuticals and be effective when uh, they arrive at the hospitals or locations they need to. So that's you know a story people don't think about all the things that go uh, you know along the lines um, as as we're talking about this industry. And then research testing and medical labs is is another um, category um, aspect of our industry. So we support all those industries. And here at SC Bio, we talk about build, advancing, innovating, and then ultimately growing our industry here. And so when we say those words, this screen may have a lot more words on it. And really that's on purpose to show that we are um, really paying attention to what those um, aspects mean and how we as, as a group, as a staff, and as a board, and really as, as a um, membership as a whole are working towards these goals. So it's building the ecosystem and, and convening and bringing everybody together to form those partnerships that then ad advance the industry. And so what are those you know, marketing things that we can do? What are the next you know, generation things? How can we be ahead of the curve here in South Carolina? Um, and then what is the innovation? You know, we haven't had a lot of time to support and foster those life science specific startups that are here in South Carolina. And so now we are doing that. And it's all to fuel this knowledge economy um, and to really diversify um, South Carolina and how we can, um, can grow and really broaden the impact and impact more people. Um, and we have focus areas uh, in order to do this. So you mentioned economic development. So a lot of that is on that recruitment side. So um, recruiting those companies that want to have, um, whether it's a, a company, um, a foreign company that wants to come in and have that presence in the United States, workforce and development. Um, no one's going to come here if we don't have the programs and support to do that here in South Carolina. Um, we don't spend a lot of time at the state house, though when we do, we're again sharing that story of the life sciences. Um, with the industry uh, and our legislators so they understand the importance of it. Um, I talked about accelerating innovation. We have a full-time staff member now um, that is focused on that and figuring out where there's some, maybe some opportunities uh, for collaboration or grant opportunities for us. Uh, when you talk about, about those startup companies, they need money to grow. So we um, are looking to bring in more capital investment in this area to South Carolina. A lot of it lives in Boston and California, and that will not change, though the more that we can let people know about what's happening in South Carolina, that will change. Uh, collaborating and networking. Um, as you might imagine, we're doing a lot of this just like here today, virtually, though we're looking forward to getting back into some small groups and then uh, and then eventually back into our larger working groups um, where we can all see each other and interact in person. And then marketing, again, another um, important aspect to this, not only are we sharing our message with the world, it's important for us to share the message here today with you all so that you understand um, what is here in South Carolina. Speaking of which, so Thermo Fisher Scientific um, is in Florence. You can see the site there. and You may have heard a lot about um, APIs and, and the opportunities to recruit a lot of that back because now about 90% of that is produced overseas, although Thermo Fisher Scientific has a big presence in, um, in Florence. And so we, um, we do have uh, that existing base. Uh, here in the upstate, Arthrex, you may have um, realized when they came here in 2019, they're continuing to grow and expand and really are the gold standard as far as orthopedics. Uh, and we're excited to see that growth continue and support them. Um, Abbott has been here for many years and they employ over 500 individuals. They're continuing to grow and expand. They produce um, the uh, pacemakers in Abbott. And I'll have to say that uh, my mother-in-law um, recently um, underwent a, a surgery to have a pacemaker put in. In fact, she was in and out before the end of the day. And I had, she checked her paperwork. I asked her, I said, can you just see what brand uh, pacemaker you have? And indeed she does have one um, that is at, at Abbott, which was made here in Pickens County. Nephron Pharmaceuticals, I told you, I mean, this is a beautiful campus that again, continues to grow and expand. Um, and is uh, the home, if you will, of our um, board chair, Lou Kennedy. Uh, and they produce nebulizers and one of the biggest in the world that do, does that as well uh, and continues to grow and expand and, and has, um, you know, again, 
uh, like many of the companies, been able to respond to the COVID crisis. Um, so what their um, products do is really help people breathe from the nebulizers, uh, the medicine that is that is in the nebulizers. Uh, so this was important, um, obviously during COVID and post COVID, and even you know a, um, an opportunity to have people come through Nephron to get their vaccines. You know if it needs to happen, a lot of our companies. Uh, continue to respond and understand the importance of, of those things. We talked about digital health. Again, another uh, Greenville-based company, Chartspan, and they are one of the nation's largest uh, chronic care management firm. And so that is, um, again, um, based uh, digitally here in Greenville. Bicore Scientific, this is another great success story, um, an SCRA company that had uh, just a handful of employees and now over 400 nationwide. Um, and this is a molecular diagnostic company. So really testing for those um, specific um, um, you know, conditions. And so um, in during COVID, did uh, pivot from a, a large panel that they did to one that was COVID. And so was able to expand and grow. And this is their, their offices right here in West Edge. And we at SC Bio um, have an office in West Edge as, as well as um, in the upstate. And then we also have one in Columbia with the Department of Commerce. We were really excited uh, to have the support of the governor um, earlier this year at our annual conference, which uh, again was virtual, a success. Over uh, 700 individuals joined us virtually from all over the world. So that's one of the benefits I would say um, that we were able to have a lot more participation from folks that may be not able to join us directly in South Carolina. And so after our conference, um, Governor McMaster uh, declared that life science, life science is weak that week. And then um, later the following month, we were at Bosch and Loam uh, here in Greenville and he issued an executive order that talked about the importance of repatriation of the life sciences uh, in South Carolina and really um, making sure that we have the elements that will continue to make us successful, that we're not reliant uh, on overseas, especially, um, you know, which brought to light uh, many of those reliances that we have on APIs, on vitamin C, a lot of those things that were produced, that are produced overseas, that to, to bring them um, here back to the U.S. And we want to be front and center, as you might imagine, in South Carolina to do just that. So we are working with the governor's office um, and the Department of Commerce to even reinforce um, and do a little bit more. Uh, and we've already been working on doing some of those things. So when we're talking to international companies, you know, what do they say? Do they even know where South Carolina is? Some do, some don't. Some might know our, our neighbors, North Carolina, uh, for the Research Triangle Park and their expertise. And we say, hey, we're, we're just right next door. And what we can do is a smaller state, which we um, we really pride ourselves on, as many of you know, right? Making those connections, we all know each other in one way or another. So to be able to help a company make a bigger splash, right? So they could go to Boston or they could go to North Carolina and they'd be one of many. We will pay them special attention. And really because our ecosystem continues to grow, we have the resources they need to be able to be successful. Um, so there's a lot to think about. If you're, you're coming um, from a different country to the US as far as reimbursement strategies, right? <laughs> Which we're all familiar with, uh, reimbursement, FDA navigation, you hear a lot about now about the emergency authorization use. No one knew about that before COVID. Um, so just navigating through the FDA and, and, you know, the different elements that you have to here in the U.S., we're able to connect uh, these companies to resources right here in South Carolina. As you know, many people uh, love our state, and so we have a lot of great resources with people now moving to, to South Carolina that are, have been in our industry for many, many years. Um, when we talk about this innovation and whether it's a medical device or a pharmaceutical element, you know, we want to have that connection um, with our universities and also our healthcare entities. In the end, it's helping us, right, all of us as patients lead better lives. And so we can have, we have those connections um, here in South Carolina. And again, working on uh, making those easier for companies uh, to have. Here's just an example, again, of, you know, when we're talking to these companies, here are some destinations, whether they are um, built out already or being built. Um, this is, happens to be in Colombia. Um, where can we have these, these companies go? And they may need lab space. Or they may just need an office uh, to begin selling, you know, what they want to sell. Um, I talked about 
having the connections to the hospital systems. And, and we have, you know, one of the top 20 um, largest uh, in Prisma Healthcare. And, and as you know, we, we hear about acquisitions and things of that happening all along the way. Um, and South Carolina Hospital Association brings all those together. And so we have um, the South Carolina Hospital Association um, President Thornton Kirby on our executive uh, team, on our, on our board of directors. And so um, making that connection is something that not all of the organizations like ours do. And so we're really happy to be able to do that. Uh, and even um, VCOM, which is in Spartanburg, you know, just some people, we, we just aren't aware of all the great things that are here in South Carolina. So bringing those front and center to those that might need it. And when we, we um, were able to travel, we did travel the world. So we'll look to see if we can get back to that. And in the fall, we shall see um, definitely uh, in 2022, we'll be looking to get back out there. When we were traveling, um, we were going to places like Switzerland for, for Swiss Biotech, uh, the national um, bio organization, which we are an affiliate of, um, Medica, which is in Dusseldorf, Germany. Um, we're not sure if they're going to have their conference in November. Um, and so, and even Arab Health. And so these are where all these companies come to, to work with each other or to, you know, to um, form partnerships, um, do business deals. And so the economic developers of the world, which we're a part of, this is where we travel with our regional alliances and, and the Department of Commerce to, again, share that story about the successes. And, and a lot of times we bring our industry with us. Um, and we're the storytellers and we, we will um, share that news. And so it's always good to hear right from the industry itself about what it's like here in South Carolina. And we talk about when we share that story, they want to know about, well, what does the future look like? And so the future does look bright because of the attention that we're paying to our workforce development pro, uh, programs at many levels. Um, and so you're happy to see the, the Furman logo there as well. And they're on our board of directors, um, as well as Clemson, MUSC, University of South Carolina, even with the Greenwood Genetic Center, another gem uh, in the upstate of South Carolina and the research they do and the pharmaceutical companies they work with. So again, this just to, to show the partnerships that we have, the active partnerships that we work with um, here in South Carolina already. And so um, a lot of companies either wanna be connected to the universities, whether it's professors doing research in their field um, or some key opinion leaders uh, that they can work with too. And we also talked about this innovation uh, platform. And so again, that is just really identifying right now, where are those gaps? So if someone has an idea, where do they go? So we want people to, to know that we have these resources to help in that initial process and then either succeed quickly or fail quickly so they can get onto the next idea and help us live uh, better lives uh, with their technology and innovation and ideas. Collaboration is such a big part of what we do. Um, I've mentioned bio, right? And so we are a, a state affiliate. There's about there's one in, in every um, in every state. So we look to them for those national trends and things that we need to pay attention to, and really relied a lot on their leadership um, during COVID as far as that collaboration and helping people explain even just the clinical trials and why is it going, you know, wh why did it go so quickly and, and how did, and is it effective and, and those type of things and that belief in science. And so bringing in some of their experts to help educate um, not only our uh, membership, um, our investors in SC Bio, those that are in the state of South Carolina. So bio represents those biotech firms, so the pharmaceutical firms, the Johnson and Johnsons and Pfizer's. Um, Avamed, which is the next one here, um, they represent the medical devices. So when we were talking about those implantables, like an Arthrex, um, and the companies that we have a lot of companies in South Carolina that make the components, the parts that then make the medical devices. So we have an expertise in that. No, no surprise, we're good at making things right. And then pharma represents those large pharmaceutical manufacturers as well. And you see again the, the partnerships that continue to abound. Um, from our universities, from SCRA, the Hospital Association, and you see a lot of our economic developers in the, in the regions as well as the universities uh, that we work with. This next slide uh, is one of the favorites of Morgan Nichols, who is our investor relations. So this is, these are all the companies and we call our members investors. They invest uh, in SC Bio. And so this, when we, um, when Sam and I were, were starting out just together on, on staff here to grow this, um, this organization, this had a lot less logos on it, right? So we've been very excited in the last four years 
to really bring in so many people that have an interest in seeing our industry industry continue to grow and expand. And without the support and the investment from these companies, we would not be able to do the many things that we do. Uh, so we we are a small um, SC Bio staff that we uh, we have been called fierce, uh, that we get a lot done with just a, a handful of employees. And really what it takes is uh, is leadership, not only from us, it's from our board of directors. And so um, this is another slide I love to share because you can just see um, the, the leadership uh, and the, and the um, expertise that our industry has and that are all willing to take time to help one another. And that's what's really been amazing to see. Um, you know, whether when we were sitting around the large, and as you can see, very large uh, board of directors table, um, the partnerships and interaction that went on with each other in just learning about what a, a different company does or the university where there's a, um, a partnership that could be held or a collaboration. Um, so it's been very exciting to see, uh, again, our board of directors grow and also our foundation board of directors um, grow as well. So um, mainly what we do is through SC Bio, our foundation continues um, to grow and expand. And really the focus of that um, foundation board is on some of those grant opportunities that we have to help support the workforce development um, portion of what we do. So our annual conference, oh, I can't wait to get back. I'm sure you guys are looking forward to it too, right? When we were all able to be together, the, this was our, our last um, in-person conference, which was in Greenville at the Hyatt Regency. So many of you probably familiar um, uh, with, uh, with seeing that room. Uh, we will be um, having our annual conference where um, we're hopeful in person, likely we'll have some virtual elements as well in February in Charleston. Um, so we're, we look forward to, to getting back to those days where we can see each other. Although I know a lot of elements like this are good too, you know, as a statewide organization, bringing people together, um, it's just a great way to do it um, through the power of, of uh, virtual collaboration. Uh, though I think nothing um, can uh, substitute for seeing people in person as well. So I think a good combination of both will be how we continue to, to approach things at SC Bio. So that's just a little bit about us as an organization and our industry. And I am happy to answer any questions uh, that you may have um, here today. And I right. do, oh, Go Dan. Ahead. Um, <laughs> we have one question so far and boy, there's a lot of information you threw at us. And if you have <laughs> questions, please put them in the chat. Our first question is, um, it's a critical question of practical steps that the South Carolina government is doing to attract companies. It needs to be much more than saying life sciences is a priority. And he mentioned the governor of Jeb Bush of uh, Florida being a good example. Exactly what are we doing um, on the government side to attract people to come here? Sure. Well, and so um, to that point, what the governor is really expecting is SC Bio to lead those efforts with the Department of Commerce. So what specifically are we doing? We just had a meeting um, this morning um, with a couple of our regional alliances is really um, prioritizing places that we are going to go visit and trade shows that we will attend. So right now, as you might imagine, it's it's sort of in flux as far as where we can go, where we can travel, though making those plans, coll collaborating as a state to making sure that we um, are doing the research to reach those companies. So a lot of how economic development works um, is um, calling calling on companies that we want to, um, to have in South Carolina, whether it's um, that API, uh, API, this active pharmaceutical um, ingredients, whether it's um, a medical device company, PPE producers, you know, things that make sense here for South Carolina. So we do our research in advance, contact those companies, follow up with those companies, either have a virtual visit or go visit them in person. And so what we tend to do is go to different um, regions or areas. When, when um, I talked about earlier, like a um, Swiss bio, uh, that's a conference that we go to and there's a lot of opportunity for these biotech companies to learn about South Carolina income. So that's just one example of us as a, as a group, as SD Bio, working with Department of Commerce to lead with our um, regional alliances to go out and actively recruit. And for us, that is sharing the story and then following up. And when companies are interested, having 
um, a real unified and streamlined approach. What I will say is that when we are com we compete against Florida, North Carolina, you know, um, Boston, many of these, or even just at you know um, Georgia, right in in the southeast where we see a lot of that competition. And one of the things that um, companies can really appreciate is the ease at which we work together and and have our you know, it's one thing to be at, you know, with government, right? Sometimes you think, oh, it's bureaucracy and you got to talk to this person or talk to that person or what have. We really have a unified approach and we've been told that it's very easy to work with us as these companies are making, you know, very big decisions about either coming to the U.S. or, or moving or expanding a location. Why would they want to come here? And so often you hear about incentives, um, uh, as a part of that. And so that's when we work with Department of Commerce. But there's a whole host of things before they, they come and visit. And what we really try to do is get them here. Is your uh, group unique to South Carolina or is there a North Carolina bio uh, going on? Yes. So I will say, so there is a um, North Carolina Bio, and so they operate a little differently. They have one of, um, their organization is focused mostly on public policy, though they have another um, ASP, another organization, NC Biotech Center, that focuses a lot about supporting the industry. So they, they're they working just as hard as we are to recruit, recruit those industries. But I will say what is unique about SC Bio, every statewide organization that is part of this big uh, national bio, um, uh, association. Everyone is operating a little differently. So some work with their Department of Commerce. Some are focused, most of them are focused more on public policy. Uh, some get involved in this economic development recruitment. Some are just called in on certain occasions. So what, what is neat about us is that we are working, you know, really hand in glove with the Department of Commerce in, in, that, um, in that recruitment of companies. And then we are called upon when our expertise is needed. That helps. Yep. Does South Carolina bio include veterinarian sciences and industries? That is a good question. We don't have a lot of um, veterinary members, I would say, or investors, though it does. And it has, um, we've had companies that have been interested that uh, to either that they have a product that they, that would be in the veterinary services area. I will even say, um, so I'd say it's not where we welcome all that we would be you know, upfront to say that's not, a, a priority for us. It's really focused in human health. We do have a company um, and she has many companies. She's an entrepreneur in Charleston. And one of those is um, they developed this um, mat that um, it's easily washable for veterinary um, services. Um, and then another for, um, this is for dogs. I guess it could be cats too. And, um, and then also when they get their teeth cleaned, they, um, I don't know how, I forget how they have the dog's mouth open, but this was a, an easier sort of bounce and back type of device, if you will. Um, so I just, I learned something new every day. <laughs> um, Sam came and talked to us, I don't know, four or five years ago, and that's why we thought we'd have him speak, but he's moved on. Mm -hmm. One of the things that he talked about back then was the fact that uh, he was hoping for and thought that there might be a growth of uh, biotech firms in and around the greater Greenville area, heading down towards uh, Southern Greenville. Has any of that happened yet? Well, like everything, it takes time. So um, I will say that when, hmm. when he first, <clears throat> um, excuse me, when he first um, took it on his role as CEO, when, when I talked about now we have, over, we have about 700 life science firms in the state, back then the count was 400. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we've definitely gotten more and we've also gotten better at identifying those. Though I will say, if you think about it too, SC Bio membership, um, those that, that know about us and are investing, which largely um, over 50% is industry focused. So those, you know, Abbott's, PAI pharmaceuticals, things of that nature. Um, Xylo Therapeutics is, is one. I don't know if they were here yet when, when Sam first took over on this in Greenville. Um, we have so much more to uncover. Uh, so there may be, so, uh, you know, again, it would be hard to press to say, although I'll say that there probably is, there probably are more, um, are, have we landed a, the big, big one? Um, no, though the timing, I think we're primed for it now. Okay. How does your firm, uh, when you say you have investors, <clears throat> are these companies investing money to make your firm a 
sounding board or a place for companies uh, from outside the area to come and, and do uh, business in South Carolina? Yeah, so we are uh, so a membership um, organization. So people in, invest in us, they have membership levels. So they can, uh, if they're a small firm, a startup, it's $500 to invest. Some of our founding members invest $50,000. On our board of directors, um, it's ten thousand dollars. So I would say before we came, uh, before we sort of rethought about what SC Bio could be, um, we did not have that set up. If we are we are set up um, similar to a regional alliance, and that prob that isn't um, uh, by accident because Sam um, started the Upstate Alliance, which I worked for at at one point as well. So again, remember we talked about that <laughs> the small state. We all know yeah. we. It's like we're all connected. So that's how they invest in us and then we have the priorities and, and report to the board of directors. So we are a nonprofit, um, a 501c6 and that foundation is, is the um, 501c3. Uh, from a selfish point of view, I have a very smart granddaughter. She's mm -hmm. a math major, doesn't know what she wants to do. And how are you working with local colleges and universities to prepare programs for uh, people to enter into this field? I'm so glad that you asked that question because before a couple of years ago, it would have been we're doing nothing. Now we're doing so much because when we talk about right STEM education, math and how it all goes together. Um, life sciences was sort of grouped under health sciences. You know, you could become a doctor or a nurse. So now it's yes, you can become a doctor or a nurse and Right, you could work at a polymed, which I used to work at. Which you know, when we talked about uh, the bioresorbable polymers. So these are, you ever had stitches, right, that went away? That's what polymed works with, and has um, you know hundreds of patents around that technology that is being used for medical device for portions of medical devices, right, with large medical device companies. So for us, it's sharing those stories with K through twelve developing specific training at the two-year colleges and then at the university level is we have student memberships uh, that are at no charge for those um, college age, even though we have some high school aged uh, members that can participate in, and connect with our industry. It uh, has been virtual lately that we have, um, I think we're uh, getting close to about 400 members, uh, student members that interact and whether it's um, a resume building, whether it's just um, some interviewing tips, really getting in the industry loves it because they get to know the pipeline uh, that's coming out. And then what we also do is it's actually our our uh, most active working group, um, our workforce and development group made up of industry professionals, economic developers, the regional workforce advisors, um, which are out there in the schools doing these programmings. And now we're being invited to present the, like this story, although we add in some, some different you know, elements depending on, on who we're talking to, if it's you know the middle schoolers or, or the first graders and, and try to make sure it's entertaining for them, but to open their eyes as far as the, um, the opportunities that they can have with some of these, you know, um, math and science and um, these STEM related, uh, you know, skills, if that's something they're, they're interested in, that there's so many more options for them. Could you send that information to Nancy or Jessica? I'm sure they'd love to put it in the Ali notes. And I know I'm going to send it to my granddaughter and I'm sure other people here have other people they would love to send that information to, to uh, as a, a service uh, for your grandkids and other people that you know. Uh, exactly. Are there any other questions from the group out there? I'm going to let you unmute if you do have a question. Please, uh, please proceed with any questions that you might have at this time. Any thoughts, questions? Okay, well, with that, I'm going to let you go, uh, Aaron. It was wonderful to hear from you. It's amazing to see how it's grown in the past uh, five years since Sam last spoke to us. Uh, yeah. We do have a question from uh, Steve. Steve, go ahead, unmute yourself and go ahead. That wasn't a question, that was a pause. That was a pause, all right, okay, <laughs> applause. Okay, great. Well, all applause to Aaron and thank you very much for coming. And yeah. hopefully next time when we invite you, there'll be more people uh, and companies working in this industry and you'll be able to do it in person and uh, Tell us more about it. Thank you again for coming, Aaron. Yes, well, thank you. I look forward to it. And thank you all for taking the time to listen to our story. And I will be sure to follow up for information. Anyone that has anyone um, in school that wants to know about it, mm -hmm. we'll definitely make sure that we, we connect with you um, uh, or, or the kids 
to, to help them understand what we have right here in South Carolina, which is such an asset. Absolutely. Thank you again. We appreciate okay. it very much. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. And uh, before you leave, uh, everybody, I would like thank to take you. a moment to thank Dan Sheska, who is the chair of our Lunch and Learn Committee, uh, for an excellent job in leading our committee of four and uh, making sure that we always have interesting topics. I, I, I applaud you, Dan. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, all. Bye. <laughs>